Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, you're going to learn about how you can create a web view in SwiftUI. By default, there is no built-in web view available, but you can use something called UI view representable to create a web view. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over here and create a brand new file. You can name this file anything you want. I'm just going to call it web view. All right, first thing I'm going to do is import surf UI and then I will create a struct called web view. Since there is no web view, we will have to utilize the WK web view and use it. So a control that is available in the UI kit uh, or a control that is available in the app kit can be used and can be represented in a surf UI application if you use UI view representable or NS view representable for Mac OS apps. When you are conforming to the protocol of UI view representable, there are a couple of functions that you must implement. And one of them is make UI view. And the other one is update UI view. We're not really going to do anything with update UI view. So for now, you can just leave it blank. The make UI view will be responsible for creating the WK web view. So let's go ahead and create that. WK web view. You can see it's not really pulling up because we still have to import the web kit. There we go. So now we have created WK web view. We also need to create a request because if we are using WK web view, what exactly URL do we want to represent? We don't really have any URL. So that is a good thing that we can take from a constructor or initializer. So someone, someone is going to pass in the URL and that URL is going to be then fed to the URL request. Next, we can finally call webview.load and load the request and make sure to return the webview. Let's go ahead and build our application. All right. So this is great. Only with few lines of code, we were able to implement a web view. And now we are ready to use our web view into our application. It is the UI view representable part that allows this particular structure or control to be used in a surf UI application. I'm gonna jump into my content view and simply use the web view. You'll type web view, you can see that it's available. And one of the things that we must pass in is a URL. So let's go ahead and pass in some sort of a URL. It can be any URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and pass in google.com. And since it's hard coded, I can go ahead and force unwrap it. But make sure that you are uh, safely unwrapping this. For this demo, I'm just showing you that right now it's going to be OK because we're not injecting anything over here. All right. Now we can go ahead and run it. Let's see what happens when we run this application. Isn't that cool that only with few lines of code, we were able to go ahead and see Google and we can go ahead and uh, utilize our web view. Everything is functional. Now, one of the other things that is available uh, when we are implementing web view is you can dive into or hook into different kind of events that are taking place in the web view. And one of those events can be when it was finished loading, when it started loading. And based on that, you can even show a loading sign. So how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, there are a couple of things we need to do. We need to set the web views navigation delegate to the coordinator. So someone should be responsible for handling all the delegate functions, delegate events, which are generated by WebView. You can see WebView consists of delegate, UI delegate, but we're not really interested in UI delegate. We're interested in navigation delegate. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to context.coordinator. Currently, we don't really have any coordinator. 
because we haven't implemented any coordinator. So let's go ahead and implement the coordinator over here. You can call your coordinator anything you want. I'm just going to go ahead and call it web view coordinator and as object. And also it will be implementing the navigation delegate. So WK navigation delegate. Now, whenever we are using this context.coordinator, it's going to look into another function of UIView representable, which is make coordinator. We have not really implemented make coordinator, so let's go ahead and implement that. We're going to make sure that it actually does return a web view coordinator. And from over here, we can simply go ahead and return a web view coordinator. That's the one that we just created right here. Now, inside the WebView coordinator, there are many different kinds of events happening. If I go ahead and open this up, you can see that we have events for did change. We have events for did finish. If I go ahead and type finish, we have events for did start. So all of these events are actually taking action. What we want to do is we want to hook up to the did start provisioning navigation. So let's go ahead and implement that. And we can go ahead and implement also did fail. Maybe something bad happened and it failed. For failing, we can, right now, we're just going to error it out, but it will be a good idea to add a closure and give this error to someone else. But right now, it's okay. And the other thing we need to implement is did finish, when you are finished downloading the resources. Now, currently, you can see that we're not really doing anything in there. Whenever the did provision navigation starts, meaning whenever it is starting to load stuff or finish stuff, we're not really doing anything. What we can do is we can expose some closures or callback functions that can fire whenever something starts or finishes. So I can go ahead and create these functions like did finish and did start and call them so I can transfer the control back to the view. So right over here in when we are creating did start, which will be or did finish, I guess, this one. You can see there are many different available, right? So let's go ahead and actually create initializer. In the initializer we need to pass in did start. This is like if you want to hook up to these different kind of events. And by default, we're just going to assign it nothing. So if you don't pass anything, that's okay too. And for did finish, we are also going to make sure that you are calling this. So self dot did start equals to did start, and self dot did finish equals to did finish. This means that whenever you are creating web view coordinator you have a choice of passing in did start and did finish. So let's go ahead and do that because we want to do it so that we can show a loading sign if we want to. So here we go. This will be did start and this will be did finish. We're not really doing anything in did start or did finish, but we have access to it. Now, another thing that we can do is showing the loading sign. And what we can do is we can also pass over here a bindable expression which can be show loading sign or not. So basically it's based on if you want to show the loading sign or not. Whenever we start we can say show loading sign equals to true and whenever it, it finishes loading we can say show loading signs to false. Inside over here you can see in the actual finish function when you're provisioning profile, uh, no, provisioning navigation, we can call a did start and did finish. This start and did finish is going to get fired whenever the downloading has started, and did finish is going to get fired whenever the web page has completely downloaded and finished downloading. Now, looking at that, we can see that now we need to pass in the loading part also. This loading part is going to make sure that we are loading or we are showing the loading sign. So let's go back to the content view. 
And currently you can see that we are missing the second argument. So let's go ahead and pass in the show loading, where this can be a bindable expression. We can say show loading over here. And based on show loading, whether this property is true or false, we can show an overlay with a progress view. So I'm going to go ahead and say show loading, false, like this. And this will be completely up to you, like how you want to display. But I can go ahead and use an overlay if I want to. In the overlay, I can check if it's show loading, then probably I can go ahead and display a progress view. Now, this is not to say that you should do these things, meaning you should see a loading or you should show a loading sign, but I'm just trying to show you that you can if you want to. Else, in the other case, we are not really going to do anything and going to return an empty view. Unfortunately, this technique is not really going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is that the progress view is very different from empty view. So even if this is a tenary operator, if and else, you have to return the same exact view type. Now, in this case, there are many different ways to handle this, but the easiest one is to some, simply return any view. So I'm going to make an extension over here to any view. Any view is not really a big problem. I know that some people think that it's, oh, it's returning any view and, oh, this is not a good technique. In this particular case, it's actually not because the internal view is not really, or child view is not really changing at all. So the performance is not going to be hit or there won't be any problem with those things. There we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and run the application. You can see that for a very slight second, there was a loading sign. Let me go ahead and jump onto images. See that it's loading sign? It's, it's going to appear for just a second and then it will go away. So that's the loading sign that we are displaying. Just for a very split of a second. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh, go to home. Yeah, anytime you jump anywhere, there we go, loading sign, and then it's gone. So that is happening because we are hooking up into the did finish and did start events of the navigation delegate of web view. And that allows us to find out if it is completely loaded or not. There we go. So in this video, you learn about how you can implement a web view and not only how you can implement a web view, but also how you can hook into different kind of events that are generated by the WK navigation delegate, which allows you to find out when the downloading started and when the downloaded or the web page finished. So hope you like this tutorial. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different courses on many different technologies, including CIF UI, CIF UI Cookbook, CIF for Intermediate Advanced Developer, Mastering RX Swift, MVVM Design Pattern for UI Kit application, as well as MVVM Core Data, which is a bestseller, Test Driven Development, as you can see, highest rated courses, and even Async and Await. So check out all the courses. The link is right there in the YouTube description. Thank you so much for your continuous support.